go jacked in. You jacked in. I'm jacked in. You jacked in. As opposed to off. Yeah. It's always better to jack in than jack off in public. Well, that's that's like, that's kink shaming. Yeah, that's one thing I never thought I was going to be growing up was a, a kink shamer. I never thought that I'd be that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of thrust upon you. Did you ever think, mm-hmm. kids always, yeah, did you ever think? Did you ever do that? <laughs> Tried to a few times. I had a go. I just thought, oh, this is a little bit too it's hard. It's usually just it? like this. It's come dumb. That's the implication. Mine's like a what we, monkey banging the cymbals together, but it's got done the wrong way around, so it can't even do that right. It's oh, yeah. pretty. Anyway, all, all self-deprecation aside. Uh, kids always think about what they want to be, but did you ever think about what you didn't want to be? That I don't seems think like that, an easier starting point. I, when I was a kid, I don't think I even knew what I didn't want to be. I didn't know it existed yet. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah, I do know. I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I know there was a real thing about a garbage man. That was like a real. That was like the boogeyman mm. of future possible jobs for children. I was just like, oh. I knew I didn't want to be a lifeguard because I didn't know how to swim that well. Yeah. But. Yeah. <laughs> most people don't become love guys anyway. I, I was like, um, I was certain I never wanted to be a social justice warrior. I didn't even really exist though back then. Are you? No. I couldn't think of anything further from the truth. You're offensive in every way. Yeah. Yeah, you're disgraceful. I'm pretty bad. I'm a pretty bad guy. I'm a bad guy. Do we want to talk about what we were talking about before? <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about before? <laughs> I'm, I'm unpopular opinions. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we could talk about the topic of unpopular opinions. Okay. What's your uh, What's your mild unpopular opinion? Mildly politically correct unpopular opinion. Yeah, not mildly unpopular, but mild in um, impact. Um, I don't see anything wrong with Eddie Maguire. I don't, really? I don't know what all the hype is about. Maybe I'm not into footy enough to understand the peripheral drama that surrounds the actual game itself. Mm. But Eddie Maguire just seems like a pretty standard guy. <sighs> Koshy, on the other hand, though, that's, that's a popular opinion after his comments, I think. He, he's a cunt. Yeah. 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 Well, but Eddie Maguire's all right. He he isn't he? <laughs> he he did pretty well when they lost the grand final. Like he recently. took it well. Yeah, he took it well. Um but he also called Adam Goods a gorilla a few years ago. So he was the guy that did that. <laughs> yeah, that <was> oh <laughs> no, no no it was someone I thought it was a stranger in the crowd. No, that was uh, that was that was Adam Goods. Adam Goods oh, called it sucks Adam Goods. That a I'm girl? like trying to think of like I'm like, oh was that another indigenous player? Because <laughs> it totally could have happened another time, but no, he said it on the radio. Yeah. Called him King or King Kong or something. But in, in the context, it wasn't like directly calling him that. It was like. Okay. More of like he was like using it, is it, it is anal- an, as an analogy. That's really hard to say. Using it as an analogy. An analogy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Who, who taunted bloody Andrew Simons back in the day? Abhijan Singh. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Okay. It feels like it's not as bad if it came from someone else who was of darker skin as Maybe. well. I don't think Andrew Simons agreed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Har- guy was yeah. a beast. Well, Abhijan Singh was a fucking cunt. Yeah. Do you have any unpopular opinions uh, based around cricket? <laughs> Because I know you're such a massive fan of cricket. <laughs> what is your opinion on Zimbabwe? Uh, oh, lovely. Lovely mm. uh, cricket team. Mm. Just beautiful. Mm. No, and, they dissolved. Um, <laughs> they dissolved. That did. Yeah, they're not right anymore. Um, oh, geez. I don't know. Unpopular opinions. I reckon um, 
here's an unpopular opinion. It doesn't matter who's prime minister of Australia. Like every everything just keeps going on. It does. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you wouldn't. You'd rather not see some dickhead on TV all the time. Mm. But I guess you could just turn the TV off. But yeah, yeah it doesn't impact anyone. One thing that bothers the shit out of me and it happened on the way over here was like you'd be driving. I was driving down in uh, two lanes of traffic. Um, well, it was four lanes, but yeah, two going either way. Making your way downtown. Making my way downtown. <laughs> I was making my way downtown. Mm. And uh, I was in the left lane and in the right lane, you know, there's just always some asshole who has to do a perfectly legal right turn and it just holds up everyone in the right lane yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I did that, like coming here actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, except other people were in front of me turning, so I was like, that's fine. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, we're all in this together. But then everyone behind that person just wants to dart out to the left lane and just get fucking got to keep going. You can't stop. Can't oh, yeah. stop. Yeah, well, what I had was a really precarious situation where I was – we were going about 60 k's an hour. Standard. And this guy in a beat-up fucking like RAV4 is in the right lane and there's like enough space between me and the, and the car in front of me like that you could fit a car in there but you wouldn't want to – try but he did he wanted to try he was like yeah all right we're doing this so he indicated and within like half a second of actually flicking on his indicator he's off into my lane and fucking in front kid of you. you not he just got in front of me before that foot before that fucking hitting that car right in front of him like it was jesus. do or die he was speeding up i was like jesus hey, at least he indicated yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you got to keep moving. You have to keep progress at yeah. 100% rate like a great white shark. Otherwise, you'll die. Yeah. Like <laughs> he was willing to risk his life. Obviously, it's like universal that when people get in the cars, they're like so desensitized yeah. to what's around even them. If, even if you're like you, you're not late for something, you're just going somewhere. You're like, well, I have to take the quickest route. Yeah, you have to get – you have to – That it's such a <laughs> – it's such a – palpable internal feeling of just raw just anxiety yeah. that everyone experiences of just like fucking gotta fucking you get to get a there. school zone like in peak hour school zone time oh, you're like fucking children kids slowing me down lollipop <laughs> man days. yeah right, but it's very toxic I don't get it I don't understand like we just have to I don't know why people get so intense that like we just have to go 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 it's like mm, just because everyone's playing trap music in their cars yeah. <laughs> see that ads from 92.9 yeah just like really painful to listen to triple j bullshit yeah uh like some folk song comes on or some like just unlistenable host comes on uh yeah. <laughs> who would that who's that though like i don't i'm out of the league dude you- <laughs> I, every i like literally i turn it on to triple j i'm like oh, i'll see what's on and they're like within 10 seconds i'm like no fuck this yeah because i the know there are boring couple- so, and was some it's not Louis McCurdy, so I don't want to listen to them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's usually what people are listening to. We it should be compulsory to uh listen to like like seven hertz frequency meditation <laughs> <laughs> playlist music. What you listen to when you yeah. drive is, I certainly think, has an impact on your on how um how much more likely you are to take risks when you're driving. Yeah. I listen to the sure. Fast and Furious soundtrack in my car and I can oh, literally right. fly while yeah. driving. So, Oh, yeah. yeah. I can just imagine it. You're in your car. It's like tilted back like a muscle car. Just oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, can drift, take off. I can drift but like in a straight line for like 2Ks at least. That's sick. Yeah, that it is. That would be like getting sort of into like real world record territory, wouldn't it? Oh, you know, I, I, I want to be humble. You know. Yeah. Well, it's good to be humble. It's always, you know. Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you listen to Triple J? No. Uh, In the car? Yeah. Obviously not out of the car. No one does it. It's, it's very, this is a very rare cir- circumstance, but if I don't have uh, any podcast to listen to, the next thing I would go to is like yeah, some music. Pretty much. But if I've been lashing my music hard, I can't sometimes I just can't sit through any of the usual stuff and I don't want to have to like think about what I want to listen to I don't Mm. really want want it to be kind of automated so I'll skip that then I'll just put Triple J on Um, but when I was working in other jobs like you get it all day Mm. and um, well we used to get it until fucking this block party song came on our boss came out and heard it and didn't like it and then that was it no more Triple J 
that's enough. You hated the block party song yeah, enough to it. change the station? It, it was a particularly shit block party song. Oh, like was, a new one? Or like, yeah, yeah, it was like, oh. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't any of their old stuff. I can't remember the song, but uh, it, it was shit. What channel did he change it to? Uh, it's the one that plays point. like pink all the time. Oh, Jesus. Like, like six or seven times a day. Like all of them? Yeah. I think it was like, I actually think it was like 94.5 or something. I think pink is like in with the Australian government or something. Cause she she's like massive over here, and I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it either. What's her demographic even? Actually, I didn't. Want, I just wanted to ask that so that we could get into it, and I didn't have to like make any um like potentially false assumptions. I don't know actually. Um, I don't. I can't. I, yeah, I can't, actually can't even think of the demo. Be a bit of an older. It's just basic white people. It it would be like the middle aged. Basic white people. People that don't really like music, they're just like, oh, I'll listen to this while it's because it's just on. And then they see a concert. Yeah. Puts on a good performance, apparently. So kudos. You always hear that about certain artists. Like their music might not be great, but you hear that they put on a good performance and it sort of ma- it goes a long way in how you view that person. Yeah. I was at okay, Geisha Bar yeah. last weekend and they played a house remix of. That song and it was that was good, but oh, right. <laughs> oh, not I'm just saying that song as if you know what I'm talking about, yeah, because this is in my head. Um, what's the real old one? Uh, um, coming, oh, yeah, so yeah, in the classic, that's a cla- that is um, a classic sort of thing, yeah, that one, huge classic, yeah. I remember when she was in Charlie's Angels, there was like a motocross scene, and they end up, I think that it's like the uh, I think it'd be the second one. Charlie's Angels 2, where they're like chasing that creepy Finn man, I think. Creepy Finn man? Yeah. You know, the guy. As like, in his finish? No. <laughs> he gets oh, their hair a, and smells uh, it. And he's like, oh. Kind of, it was a, he was like the most fucking obscure bad guy in any film I've ever seen. Like, it was real. So he's a Finn Before man. Before it's time, really. He's a man with a Finn and he smells hair. Yeah. He has a Finn on the top like, of his head. like a fever dream. <laughs> Oh. They, they're in this like motocross scene and like they have to go to like pink to like get entry to the motocross course and she's just acting like hell fucking badass with her like pink hair that's pretty badass like peroxide she's got pink hair like blonde and then just a, oh, like a so streak gross. of pink that's like a really disgusting sweet ice cream yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know I shouldn't know this but like she's probably in the motocross scene because she used to date or maybe she still does was married to or whatever that motocross dude. Some dude who does motocross. I hate how the culture has infected me like so deeply that it's, that, that information is just in me but like that's a thing. And she had tr- problems with him and they broke up and they go back together. Yep. Just standard. Yep. Standard celebrity relationships. Yeah. And I know about it and I've never met them before. Yeah. I know about their relationship vaguely. Huh. It's pretty weird. It's so weird what we know about celebrities. It's I don't like, want to know about my friends' relationships. Yeah, it's like that's cool. You guys are you guys have got a thing that's kind of uh, whatever. But pink on the other hand, what's she doing? You know? Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be all about what they're up to. I was I always used to get annoyed. I was like, because it seemed when I was younger, like celebrities would always date other celebrities, and I was like, what the yeah. fuck is this? Like elitist, like parochial shit. It's Illuminati. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, that, no, that makes sense. Like, if you were a celebrity, the only other person that could handle being around a celebrity without freaking out, fan, fangirling, fanboying yeah. out, would be another celebrity. Also, how artists date other yeah. artists because they know the schedule. Yeah. But yeah, then you never see each other. I feel like an artist or a celebrity should like date someone who like is unemployed <laughs> <laughs> so they could just take them around with them yeah or it's always cool with like quitting their job and just like yeah i'll just be like your groupie yeah and they were like they had like the wherewithal to just not be to just be chill about being of a celebrity yeah. like it was just tony robbins style fly just fly your family family around yeah <laughs> <laughs> I read his Instagram um, captions and they they seem really religious. And I'm like, oh, don't go there. Like, no, don't. No, I just uses a lot of like, I don't know, like religious buzzwords. Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker. Yeah. If you if you don't know who that is, he uses a few words where I'm like, religion has 
has taken uh, hostage of those words and we can't really use them in any other context of that. What is he just talking about God or is he talking about he does say, salvation yeah, or something? Yeah, he talks about or? we're blessed and faith and um, he does say like praise God and thank God and like talks a lot about how his fortune was influenced by God and stuff and that I don't know, that's so jarring for me when I've seen him operate with people and be so rational and employ such wonderful thought processes in helping people deal with their problems and then he just sort of comes up with this like God shit. I don't mind in a sense because it's just the language. Because in his head he's probably thinking more of like God to him is probably like loving awareness, like that Mm. sort of universal consciousness sort of thing. Yeah. Instead of any sort of Abrahamic religious God, Judeo Judeo Christian God, you know. Yeah, I I suspect that that's that's sort of how he's. You're right. The words have been twisted by organized religion. Yeah, you can't talk about God anymore because even Americans, when they say like "God bless America" and stuff like that, that's that's still. It's weird how it's still embedded in our culture, even though there's like I'm not generally it's like. Religion, I feel like now is like the guy at the party that's sort of. Uh, he's like religion's like the twenty-seven-year-old university student who just keeps going to all the fucking like tav parties, and everyone kind of knows who he is, and but no one really wants to kind of talk to him anymore, and he's kind of out <laughs> his like he's sort of overstayed his welcome sort mm. of thing, and it's like, what are you even? What are you even studying here? And like, yeah, you just hangs around to, people that are you're too just young to like, for him. If yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think I know what you mean. Um, yeah, touching kids. You know, and it's like, who? Are you, it's like, who are you exploiting? That's the first question that comes to my mind when you think about these kind of guys. Yeah. I mean, religion. Let's I'm going to stay on track with religion here. Yeah. Because I'm thinking of a few guys in particular that, you know, that there are, I don't know what they even fucking study, but. Uh, the eighth year of their commerce degree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Majoring in like management and something else. Shoot me. Um, yeah. Continuing on the theme of um, just straight up questions asked at your face. What's your least favorite religion? I don't know. I've never really given it too much like significant thought. I've just kind of like been like grouped them all together. Yeah, just grouped them all together and been like, they're all pretty similar in certain, in most respects, with slight variations. Not even any of the fake ones like Scientology, or you're like, well, they're just as bad as the rest. Yeah, I don't know because um, those ones to me seem a little bit more. Um. They seem like they're a little bit more. It's it's easier to see them as a, as a sham, so I don't hate them as much. I'm like, oh, like yeah, cool. Like you guys are just like some kind of very well organized uh, structure of you know keeping pe- like you know um, influencing people's ideologies and and obviously generating a lot of power and wealth and whatever. It's like impressive. I can see that, so I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, it's more. I'm more like, oh, that's that's cool. Like you, you did that. It's probably because they're more recent religions ra- rather than like really well established historical yeah, uh, Christianity or something like that. Yeah, they keep people hostage and refuse to give psychiatric treatment or pharmaceuticals. But yeah, um, they're impressive. <laughs> There's they are impressive. Uh, yeah. There's a church that was just built recently in a, in Canningvale um, on the corner of, uh, what was it? Really? A second one? Second one. Yeah, well, because um, the first one they built was in uh, Rivervale, like a couple, few blocks around the, cor- oh, okay. the corner from mine. Yeah. In the, in, you know, the industrial area, like around Belmont? Yeah. Yeah, that. Well, this this one's like on the corner of South Street and Violent Avenue, and it's fucking enormous. Really, it's huge. How are they it's still huge, they're man. still growing? They they demolished all the trees on that land and flattened it off. And I was like, oh, cool. They're gonna put in like a fucking massive, um, uh, like fucking IKEA or something. 
<laughs> for the head of church. Was it like, like a lot of trees? Yeah. Oh, damn. There was whole ecosystems in there, man. There was, there was things we didn't even, there was species of animals we didn't even know about. Gone. Just. What's that church. song lyric? To tear, tear, tear down the something and put up a parking lot. Oh, yeah. Um, what is it? Oh, I always seem to go, but you don't know what you got till it's gone. Take, I think it's take paradise. Take paradise, put up a Scientology up a hedge court, headquarters. Headquarters. Oh, okay, we're probably going to work on that song a bit, I guess. Have you seen Tom Cruise in his little Scientology? His little Scientology. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you he's can't little. ever say little in the same sentence as Tom Cruise. He'll, <laughs> he'll fucking find you. He's listening. Yeah. He, in my opinion, he's like the ultimate nar- narcissist. I reckon. I've just watched interviews of him like, oh, He man. might be so far gone that he doesn't, he's like not even a narcissist because narcissists, I feel like there's a tinge of like some reality. Like they at least know a little bit that they're narcissists, but he's like in the fucking clouds. Yeah. Completely unconscious of it. It's just, yeah, yeah it's like second nature to him. You know what I love about the internet is that he could – I mean, very, very unlikely, but he could literally like be watching this. <laughs> he could yeah. access it very easily. You know what I mean? Someone could show it to him where he could pop up on his Google alerts because he probably has that for Tom Cruise, surely. Yeah. That's a pretty frightening. And for Tom Cruise gay. And then he um, issues a lawsuit against that company. We should start a thing, like get this to Tom Cruise just with the, the power of the people. Let's get this to Tom Cruise. Let's let's yeah. have him see it because we've just to got see things it. to say. No, we don't even have things to say. We're just like, oh, we just we want, want him Tom to- Cruise to just like watch this because that'd be cool. <laughs> it's interesting to think like there is a slight chance, just a slight chance that uh, like some kind of high level celebrity has looked at your picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. It it, it is. But in the same sense, why should we give a fuck? Yeah. Like we're like putting this person on a pedestal. <laughs> like they picture. have seen my photo. Mm. Like I'm fine with just being yeah. I don't I don't need um Josh Brolin to see a photo of me. I don't I don't need to see a photo of Josh Brolin. <laughs> Shit, dude, he's listening. Oh yeah. Sorry, Josh. JB. JB, I mean, yeah, you kind of, he's the guy that plays Thanos, isn't he? So that's sort of. Wouldn't have a clue. Do you ever see, um, do you ever watch a film with a well-known celebrity and then the, they play a character that's like a fucking asshole or a murderer or whatever the hell and you actually kind of dislike them, like the actor is, or actress mm. as a person? You're just like, um, like, you, like a little tiny part of you can't really completely look at that film and be like, that's fiction. That's not, re- that's a portrayal of a character. It's not real. Like there's a tiny part that just sort of comes back into reality and you kind of, you look at them and your first instinct is like, fuck a murderer. You're a fucking murderer. Well, no, cause I have a properly functioning brain. So, um, oh. <laughs> no, um I don't know. Uh, who like looks evil, like Willem Dafoe, I, but I don't think he's an asshole. Yeah, it's, to be honest, the ones that I do think are assholes um, are really like the only time you ever really think a celebrity is an asshole. It's always like someone telling you like, oh, apparently he's really hard, like he or she's like really hard to deal with on set. Yeah. Like they're a real diva. That's how you that's how you find out celebrities are assholes. Like someone told me about that, about Shia LaBeouf, and I was like, oh, that guy's a, re- that guy's a real <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you never met him though. I know. I'm just a piece of shit that's fucking peddling rumors. He probably is though. Yeah, he looks like an arsehole. He looks like a bit of a... Do you remember when he got completely trolled just after the election? Like he was doing that, um, he was live streaming that protest. Yeah, that kind of like um, yeah. performance piece, piece thing, thing that he did. Yeah. And like 4chan somehow like triangulated his location because they don't leave their houses and they have like... Really, like wizardry level computing skills, and they found it. They, did, they find, and shit. did they find? Did they find the him, um, like, um, 
they went there and tore down the thing. I think he had. That's right. He had the performance piece was the the camera on the wall in Washington, like in the street, right? Wasn't and, there a flag or something as well? Yeah, that was the. So there was two things. Like he, I remember he had that like in the street in Washington where he was standing there saying, "We will not." He, he kept chanting some mantra like, "We will not let him divide us" or something. Yeah. Uh, I remember that and it went for ages and like I think somehow Will Smith, Jaden Smith was involved because he's like just somehow pops up everywhere in pop culture. Yeah. Um, but I do remember the flag thing though. There was like footage of a flag just in the breeze, right? Like he had mm. on a website just And he wanted it to go I think for the full four years. <laughs> but then yeah. it ended within a week or something. Didn't they replace the flag actually with something else? Oh, they might have. I thought that they... Um, Probably some meme or something. Yeah, I did a bit of reading on how they found it. I can't can't for the life of me remember exactly how they did, but it was yeah, it was extremely impressive. Mm. It was like holy shit. They got a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, a lot of time, and yeah, it's probably like fucking Edward Snowden in Russia somewhere, just like on four chan. Yeah, but what else would you do? Julian Assange in the embassy, just what the fuck does he do all day long? Um, I don't know. What did he do in the first place? <laughs> yeah. I don't Probably even, the same thing. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Plays Dota. RuneScape. Yeah. RuneScape. <laughs> yeah. That's how he communicates. Have you seen um, <laughs> photos of him on that fucking balcony? And he's like you maybe like- Trade skimitars. One Is person's height. Skimitar. Is that what you call it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what am I thinking of? Like the sword. Yeah, scimitar. Yeah, scimitar. Yeah. I've <laughs> pronounced it skimitar. Okay, I'm out of the loop. Yeah, out of your, out of the loop with the uh, sword. Oh man, pronunciation. I still remember. Did you ask me a question though, just then? Mm. Yeah, have you seen the photos of Julian Assange like on the balcony of the embassy? No, and it's like it's a pretty pathetic balcony. It's like half a adult human being's height from the ground. Oh, and, right. And there's just reporters One everywhere. Of those weird European sort of things. Yeah. And he's just sort of standing there and there's all these like reporters around and Yeah. It's kinda of like He's like speaking so to them? close to um Or he's just chilling and all the photographers. I think he was speaking to them, but it doesn't uh, the image it doesn't look as though he was. Because yeah. it was mid sentence. Yeah. He was just like <laughs> his mouth was closed. Yeah, he just happened to be like, Nope. Or he's being asked a question. Yeah. Some kind of snapshot in time that was not. Or he was just standing there staring at them. Gazing, yeah. Like you'd look at a mountain range. Mm. Imagine if you looked at people the way that you'd look at a mountain range. Would that oh, freak man. you out if yeah. someone looked at you like that? It was fucking, you know, maybe they put their hands over here and they were just like. It's pretty standard because. Oh, um, yeah. You know. Obvious reasons. Because you're a mountain range. Pretty, pretty picturesque. Because <laughs> you've got a mountain for a face. <laughs> Have you seen what's that film? Some Bill Hader joke. I've seen that film, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you were doing that, I was going to say, oh, yeah, they did do this to me all the time because my future is so bright. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Crystal Lee joke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chris is like he's wearing sunglasses and he's like people are like why the fuck are you wearing sunglasses and he's like because my future's too bright. <laughs> that sounds like something he would say. Oh yeah, didn't make it. Damn. He's the epitome of uh, just being your complete self and not giving a fuck what people think. Mm. You know. Yeah. Why are you sitting like that? I'm just because I'm it. me. Oh. <laughs> no, I wasn't talking to you. Yeah, see, that's why I'm not Crystal Lee. My response yeah. is going to be like, I'm yeah, just stretching. Yeah, you're like defensive. A, <laughs> I need to. I need to give a reason for this. He'd be like, I don't know. Yeah, he'd be like, stupid question. <laughs> He's a good bloke. Yeah, the cabin. He's got a bit of a cult thing, hey. Kind of thing. The way he talks about his followers, he refers to them as babies, like babies. he's giving them a, a he's label. The daddy and, or whatever. Yeah, he's the daddy, and, and he's like t- talks about like you know if you're in with his ideas and you support him, then you're invited to the log cabin. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's log, where I want to be. Yeah, hopefully no cyanide involved. Yeah, 
it's kind of got a bit of that kind of feel to it. It's like, oh, but he's a good guy. Yeah, as if he'd fucking go to a log cabin. Yeah, he seems he'd seem really out of place there. He's, yeah. It just wouldn't work. He talks about camping and he's like, why would I go camping when I we have built four walls? Yeah. And I'm like, that's funny, but I disagree so heavily. Yeah. <laughs> like he's so he's very city city um orientated. Cause cause I'm such a country boy. Country. I'm a bo- I'm, <laughs> I'm out there in the bush, you know. I grew up country, you know. I I grew up country. That's that's the upbringing that I had. Country. Mm. Yeah. Um, just eucalyptus in the air, fucking kangaroos. And the country. On the ground. In the country. And, my, and I was raised in within that environment. In the country. In the country. You're a country. You're a country boy. I'm a country boy. You're a country boy. I never felt more at home. Out in the country. Out in the country. You know, just oh, that. I love the country. Yeah, the country. It's That's where we're, we're all born from, the all, country. Yeah, all hail the country. <laughs> the country. K-U-N. In case anyone has got a fucking disgusting mind. K-U-N. What do you mean? Oh, I just don't know. It's because someone might think that we're it's saying. It's spelled C-O-U-N-T-R-Y. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they changed it because it was. Oh, they changed it. It was outrage. It was a. Um, and I hate it when they change the spelling of things. You know. Yeah. They, yeah. Just on a on a dime. Yeah, it annoys me. You know man. how? Um, yeah, you like you know how like sandwich used to be spelled S A N D W I C H. Yeah, I remember that. But now it's uh, but now it's spelled S A N G. W I G, yeah. It's like what the hell? What you expect to change, change the pronunciation of the word? An onion? Yeah. Do you remember Sandwich. that? <laughs> well, I remember onions. Yeah. You, I mean, I, I had one. I had one the other night, so I remember it quite vividly. After Tony Abbott bit into one, they did ban it. Yeah. The um the production of onions. <laughs> That's cool that he did that though, because I I was really sort of unsure about whether I should bite into an onion. But it's great that I've had some guy yeah. that I fucking look up to do it for me, mm. and and sort of was able to work out that that's probably no yeah. no go. I really do look up to Tony Abbott. Yeah, especially when it comes to um, onion etiquette. Yeah, that's the if he's taught me anything, it's you know, don't bite into. Was it a brown onion? I bet it fucking wasn't. I bet he went hardcore. Is there any other no. kind of onion like? Oh, is it purple? Purple ones? onion. What do you call it? that? Are they call purple onions. There's probably some name for it. On spring, like cantaloupe or something. Spring onions. Yeah, that's it. Is cantaloupe? That's what it is. <laughs> that's right. They changed that as well. <laughs> it always changes. Shit, man. Yeah, but I mean onion. You know, O N I O N. But they changed that to U N Y U N. What? Mm. What mm. the fuck? And they, yeah. It's funny, man. They sent out a mass text. Like it freaked the fuck out of everybody. They thought, oh, missile incoming or something. Yeah. But. Just FYI. At 4 a.m. Yeah. That's the, that's the peak time to send a mass text. Yeah, and they said FYI at the start. Yeah. FYI, colon, which I thought was quite abrasive. Yeah, Could have just been a semicolon. Yeah. Could have just been a half a colon. You know, just a, like, we get it. You're going for the colon, but you're sort of I'm just going for the colon. tapering off just before you get there. Semi. Yeah. I'm always, yeah. I had surgery to get a semicolon. Ah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got half of it removed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, uh, man. I went off the rails for a bit there. Yeah. I did. Something in the air. Can I talk about um, the first time I experienced RuneScape? Yeah, man. Just from what we were talking about before? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, a friend's house. I think this is one of the very earliest, like, internet experiences I had as well. Uh, legit. It's sort of in year Shit. six, I think. Um, came over his house and he wanted to show me RuneScape. I was like, cool, this, this is um, 
so abstract to me because I didn't play any games at all at yeah. that point except for like probably like some sort of math Olympics <laughs> game or something. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Or I don't know, the the library database at our school because um, yeah. that's a game. Um, yeah, he showed me that and then straight after he's like, do you want to hear this song? And he's like, I was like, okay, I don't really know like what a song is. Um, <laughs> 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 um, I don't really understand the concept of music yet, but okay. Um, and he showed me, um, what's that song? Cut my life into pieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he showed me that. It's always just kind of stuck with me. Hasn't changed me in any way. Yeah. Didn't sort of, <clears throat> didn't, didn't, didn't shape who I am, but it's always just kind of been in my head that that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are my two first, like very early internet experiences and very fitting things, you know? Very like yeah. early two thousand sort of. That was that was it, wasn't it? That yeah. was the combination. It was like edgy music and some kind of engaging, um, massive multiplayer online role playing game. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Use, <laughs> do you always say the whole thing? <laughs> I usually never say it, but as I came to the. You know, the conclusion yeah. that I was going to say, I was like, what's worse? Like the you, whole yeah. thing or MMORPG? Like, like, Are you impressed that you knew the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I, would not be able to, I would not be able to bust that out. Yeah. I'm impressed, but, well, I say I am impressed on the surface, but internally I lost two years of my life to World of Warcraft, so I fucking... Oh, really? You know, I used you're to one of those jerk people. off to the fucking letters MMORPG. You're one of those losers? I was a loser. I was one of those losers. One of those. And I was yeah. aware of it. Yeah. I fucking hated every second of it. I hated every second and I fucking yeah. loved it. Does anyone like enjoy it? That was the, you know what? It, that's a good thing though, to get addicted to a computer game. Cause then in a safe environment, you're like, Oh, like I had the capacity to get addicted to shit. Yeah. Then you understand meth addiction at an early age. You're yeah, like, you're oh, like, oh yeah. yeah. It reinforces the uh, notion of like not, never not even once you know and then you just sort of ride off like certain drugs anyway yeah it's that much talked about dopamine cycle yeah that was really loud <laughs> that sound that was like a that was like a dolphin yeah um yeah i never fuck with that shit <sighs> never never fuck with it it just didn't appeal to me like it never grabbed me because mm. i would get like I would just realize how like futile it was. Yeah, like, like I, it was. Um, it was just weird because you could. It was so weird to put so much effort into something and then to step back into the real world and have as absolutely fucking zero to show yeah, for it. And sometimes a negative. Yeah. Impact. <laughs> yeah, like you got bags under your eyes and you just have to go to sleep and then it just fucking. Oh wasn't yeah, that bad. blue screen all the time at night and shit, just like damaging your mitochondria. Yeah. But your paladin is healthy. I had a fucking sick paladin. Is that one of the terms? Yeah. Cool. I had a sick paladin. Yeah. I don't. I'm not gonna bring out any of the fucking lingo because I don't. You know. I yeah. Want gold to, armor or something. I want to keep people dissociated with the the reality that I actually am mm. or was addicted to it. Mm. Brutal though. It it really is a, a just a fucking it's a universe of it in itself. It's a you know we always harp on about fucking um, VR and what that's going to be like to immerse yourself in it. But some of mm. these fuck it, some of these computer games, man, they are very immersive. Do you ever play Quake? <laughs> <laughs> I actually never fucked with Quake. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm I've pre-ordered Red Dead Redemption too. Oh yeah. Pretty bad timing, but uh, yeah. I'm gonna get sucked into that one. I think I haven't played a game in a long time, but that's the kind of thing I get into. Like I get into like the Fallout's, and yeah. the GTA, and uh, oh, GTA is solid stuff like that. Uh, GTA Five. When oh, I wish I could go back to when that first came out. That was fucking sick. Mm. That that was good because it was I don't know for me anyway. It was a social thing. Like we, I remember countless nights where I'd have friends over. We'd like. Just play it together and do fucking fucked up shit. GTA Five, the latest one. Five, yeah, yeah. We'd like go up to that massive mountain 
and just drive off it. Yeah, get a motorbike. Actually, Ed. We'd like see who could, if anyone could actually get to the bottom. And mm. 91, I think once someone made it and it was the best fucking night ever. But 99.9% of the time, you just wipe out. But that was also hilarious. Yeah. So that was good. Well, you would just pass the controller around? Or? Yeah, you just have a crack. And, if, and then if you didn't do it, you'd fucking just pass it on. And mm. we'd be drinking and just like talking about like white privilege or something. That's know. fun. Yeah. Really back then? Well, cool. Yeah, we were onto it, you know. It was just started tossing around terms and, you know. Just started tossing around. Some guy would tell us that his dad's a lawyer and we'd go, cool, yeah, that's great. Now we can go out into the fucking night life with like kind of like a weird, arrogant sense of self-confidence. Oh, this would be praise? Nah. Oh, sometimes, yeah, oh. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some guy would say that, the, oh, my, my uncle's got a yacht. Uh, yeah, how privileged are we? It, these conversations Oh, they wouldn't happened. brag about it? But they would just bring it up because that's a shitty thing to do, isn't it? My uncle has a yacht. Yeah, that someone said that to me once on Rotnest on New Year's Eve, just walking past, just throwing comments out to different girls because I don't know it's kind of oh, d- yeah. just fucking really shitty male behaviour. Mm. Not like anything like degrading. I like really like just normal stuff, but mm. degrading to themselves. Um, I think because we're <laughs> actually staying on the island. In the police station because we had a friend who knew the chief of police on the island and really? he put us up in the backyard of the police station. But um, and there was like bunk beds there. Or you know, a couple of nights, one I think one or two nights, like some of us I didn't, but some of us slept in the cells because they fucking just wanted to hardcore or something like whatever. Like you skip the most badass part of getting put into a cell overnight, which is actually doing something bad. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm like, so I'm trying to convince this chick to come like back to the police station because it's cool and it seems like a kind of like a, a good way to lure someone back to your yeah, fucking- Yeah, potentially scary. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're at the police station. Cool. That's cool. Um, she just like hit back. She's like, why would I do that? I'm staying on a yacht. <laughs> staying on my dad's yacht. I don't remember the brand, but it was like like the most expensive yacht. Oh, she said the she brand. She said the it? brand, and I somehow knew it. Like I bought into that. Like I knew what that was, and I was yeah. like, "Good for you." And that yeah. was it. That was a that was a that was a shitty fucking story. That's not a real rottenness, authentic rottenness experience for her though. She's just like on the water. Yeah. How the hell? That, you got to get onto the yeah. land. Yeah. You've got to that breach. Walkers have walked. Yeah. 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 And you Sacred gotta do a bit sword. of riding, ride around a bit, check out some of the bays. Yeah. yeah. I've never been to Ronness and not just like just drank. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gone there and like enjoy the actual like landscape. Yeah. And, like gone swimming. I don't think I've gone swimming on Ronness. Oh man. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure about that. Well, that's where I want to try and get over to this summer when the craze are out is get into some of those spots. Mm. Apparently it's, yeah, you, you're going to have a good time there if you're looking for crayfish and stuff. So, Yeah, I should do a more wholesome trip of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, semi-wholesome. <laughs> Still a little you know bit of I mean? drinking. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah drinking, drinking. Drinking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah drinking. Sure. Yeah, no, smoking quokka feathers. That's what they do. Yeah. That's a ceremonial Who thing does? that the um, traditional um, residents do mm. on the island. Mm. The people that work at the just the at the supermarket. Yeah, the and people stuff. that live there. Sorry, not the traditional <laughs> historical yep. landowners. The people that run the IGA there. Yeah, the people that run the IGA. The people that work at Subway. You know those guys. Is there an IGA there? I think so. I just assume. Or Coles. Mm. Yeah, they do those. They do those. Um, quokka. Did you say? Fe- did you say feather? I said feathers. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Thank quokka you. feather burning ceremonies. They pluck the feathers off because, God forbid, you wouldn't want to hurt one of those quokkas. Yeah. You wouldn't do that. Yeah. You have to numb them first with some sort of painkiller, and then you. Um, yeah. 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 It t- actually plucking the feathers is relatively painless but we're really good people so we just make sure as a precaution that we use like some kind of local anesthetic oh, and they seem to group? like it 
Um, I've you know I've been very close to the process. I'm sort mm. of uh, somewhat of an expert on um, quokka plucking feathers mm. um, and then burning ceremonies. It's yeah. it's called burning quokka. It's um sort of part of a wider festival. Oh, okay. On the island, I is think. that at all connected to to, to our blazing swan? The same company? Any 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 uh, crossover? Uh, it's like sort of the same like ideological movement. Mm. But there's no real direct affiliation. Yep. Yeah. So you burn a quokka evergy? Yeah, a massive when one. When the sun goes down? Yeah. 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 That's what they do on Rottnest Island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I should I should check it out. Everyone should. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that you sort of you'd want to do once at least once in your lifetime, maybe maybe half a dozen times. Experience a quokka evergy, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't That's they say that. that the the flames are blue? Yeah. It's so it's so hot for whatever reason. That's right. They don't know why. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Um That's kind of the the real like the best part about it is kind of looking you're know, like witnessing one of the greatest mysteries known to man. Yeah. Um, and there's this kind of like just you're just content with that. You're just, I don't need to know. I don't need to invent some kind of crazy story to explain this. I'm just happy to accept what we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Is there many damaged retinas? Yeah, because it sort of comes off like a bit like it's like welding. Like yeah. you can't look at it directly. Mm. So, so sometimes they put up some of those like green screens sort of, you know, that the welders use and, it's funny because it does kind of reflect the real life reality that the real life reality, the reality that you can't look a quokka in the eye, otherwise you go blind. So it kind of is symbolic of yeah. That's where they got the idea from. Um, uh, similar idea. Yeah. Uh, An animalistic symbolism. Yeah. Yeah. And well, J.K. Rowling, actually. Um, J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Jo- joking. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. She went to the island in the eighties, before Harry Potter. Well, long before Harry Potter was even, you know, oh. it's conceived, and um, yeah, she she saw someone go blind from looking at the quokka, and that I was, that was the, based um, off a of basilisk. No, yeah, or is, is a quokka uh, is the basilisk mythology based off quokkas? Is that what you say? Uh, just the just like the basilisk in itself is its own mythology, but mm-hmm. the particular aspect of the basilisk where where if you looked at its eyes you would directly you would die and indirectly you would become um mm. what do they say stone stone you stone stone yeah, you get stoned what was the word that they use though petrified stone. petrified yeah you get so stoned you get you just get stoned to the you just gills get barbecued. <laughs> yeah. so yeah she got she actually adapted that from the quokka mythology so it's kind of um you know next time you watch harry potter and the Chamber of Secrets, just look at that basilisk and just think this is just this wonderful merging of basilisk mythology, which is it's just this rich mythology from Scandinavia, and quokka mythology, which is just this wholesome, beautiful, beautiful Australian mythology. And yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Have you read Roald Dahl's version of Harry Potter? <laughs> nah, nah. Mm. Is it good? I haven't read it. Oh. Yeah. How'd you find out about it? Reddit. Sort of, oh, you found out about it on Reddit. Yeah, I haven't read it, but I saw it on Reddit. You read about it on Reddit. I read it on Reddit. Yeah. But I haven't read it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, well, that's good. You can yeah. read a lot of things on Reddit. Like You can. It's good. I think it's good to read about things that you could read about. Mm. I think that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because things you can't really read about. You, you can't read it. Yeah, you and that's a whole sort of mode of communication, like a whole mode of language, you know. Yeah, you're missing out on, on you know, if you can't read something. It's you, um, yeah. yeah look, it, I think what I would say to most people that can't read is like, well, just if you can't read, learn to at least read what people are saying about things that you can't read. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then you can sort of get a little bit of an understanding mm-hmm. by reading what they say about what you can't read. Match up the GIFs and the pictures and stuff to, yeah. to the captions and slowly it. figure it out. 
just put, piece together this sort of memeology. You know, that's mm. that's the, the really where you should be starting. Um, I couldn't read before I was on Reddit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I realized that I could learn how to read via Reddit because I read it on Reddit, which is an oxy. This is like a contradiction because I couldn't read. Well, it's a bit like, but but you know, speaking of a foreign language, foreign to us, and but have, having the ability to t- tell someone that you don't speak English, you know, it's kind of like I can read on Reddit that I can learn to read on Reddit. Mm. And that's oh, cool. Oh, yeah, isn't that funny? No, that's that empowering. You like learn, you go to another country and you learn how to say in their language that you can't speak their language. <laughs> so you can yeah, maybe learn hell? like a few other things in that time, but you're just like, no, I'll just learn this one thing. Yeah, we're pretty okay. lazy like that. I feel yeah. like we're the worst for it. Australians English, or yeah, just uh, Anglo-English? Um, Anglo Australians, speakers. I reckon, yeah. I think we're... Us Australians are the worst for sure. I reckon Americans would be worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the general population compared to our general population? Mm. Yeah. I feel like there's an unpopular opinion there. Somewhere, somewhere, something to do with Americans. Um, you know, unpopular opinion, like maybe America's not the greatest country in the world. Maybe Is that an unpopular opinion? I don't know. Really. It depends where you where you spout that one out, but I feel like America, like people have like without really knowing, they have two percep two separate perceptions of America. They have mm. the the real perception perception of America, what they really think of it, because that's what it really is. You know what they see on the news, what they see from the culture, etc. But then they have a perception of what America is like via the media. Like the culture, entertainment, mm. which is much more positive. So they have this like weird like I don't want to say two way mirror, but sort of just two mirrors next to them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, they've um, they've um, the their film industry has been really influential. I think in throughout history and kind of guiding mm. people's people's beliefs about what what's um it's given it's given them a huge influence in that's mm. in that sort of realm because i have certain opinions about america and how it is really a bit of a dumpster fire yeah but at the same time i'm like the landscape is beautiful and i do kind of romanticize the culture a bit yeah because it's like the epicenter of like like any like of ego in a sense. It is so isn't anything it? that bubbles up in you that you're like trying to chase in relation to ego, then you're like America comes to mind as a place to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But when you actually like think about it, you're like, oh, there's actually a lot wrong with that country. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like a runaway ego that's just too Yeah. I was listening to the Dr. Drew. Noxious. Um, on like a radio program or whatever and he was saying how like America has like a rampant narcissism problem. Really? Yeah, it's like manifesting like through the like throughout every sort of fab- fibre of the country. Like it's like a, it's not just like, you know, one person can have narcissism. He's like the entire country as as a, as, a, as, as as one sort of has a narcissism this, problem. This like kind of shared identity that... Yeah, and it's like manifesting in like crazy... De- political division and mm. just des- desperation for fame and all that, worship yeah. of fame. Oh, yeah, that's Human definitely Human sacrifice something. via celebrity, all that stuff. Have you ever met like a someone that you've been really certain is a narcissist? Have you ever, have you, ever you know, even briefly experienced someone yes. that you're just like, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm sure we have mutual, we know people mutually. <laughs> That display those symptoms. Yeah, that 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 definitely answers that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, what happens? What has to be the, um, you know, like the cultural broth and circumstances? What what circumstances are key in fostering a person that be, that shows those traits? 
than would be considered to Those be. Those traits, um, like a narcissist, has developed those traits, but maybe not chose. I have no idea. Not really. chose, but like, yeah, they were molded. I don't know. Not sure. Early childhood stuff. Yeah, that's probably where a lot of things come from. I have no idea. Though. The way their parents act. Yeah, that could be a big. Mm. Like if they have some like a par- parental figure that's just like completely unempathetic and Probably. dead inside, and nothing's really been resolved as they go on older, grow on older. Because mm-hmm. I don't think people develop narcissism in their adult life. Yeah, I feel like if you sort of get through your first yeah. a- eighteen to twenty years, you're yeah. you're pretty. It's well, pretty people, smooth. Yeah, well, people do, but that's called um, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. Probably develops pretty early on. Imagine, yeah, imagine not knowing you're a narcissist. I guess if you were a narcissist and you didn't know and then you found out you were, you probably wouldn't be that miffed about it. So that's probably how I how I know I'm not a narcissist is that I'm thinking about how oh what what if someone told me I was? I'd be devastated. Yeah. Like the fact that you'd be devastated. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. You'd have to I feel like you couldn't be a narcissist and not know you're a narcissist. Like, I don't know. Just well, you're a, such a narcissist that you deny it. You're just like, no, I'm just fucking, I'm just the man. It's like, it's like you can't fucking, you can't drive a fucking V8 with some fucking shitty, loud, bloody exhaust system and not know that you're, that you're a fucking piece of shit. You know? Right. Like it's too loud. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you can hear it. And you're just like, yeah. you couldn't accidentally be in that situation and be like, you know, you, you couldn't be like a tentative, cautious guy just driving this V8. You're just yeah. like sort of like, oh boy. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, I mean, because like it's not obviously the exhaust isn't in your face. You're not on the outside of the car having to hear it. You're on the inside, you can still kind of. You know, it. you're aware. Yeah. yeah you're aware you of the, the impact. <laughs> wakes up all the kids in the neighborhood yeah and then of course the sound of your own car drowns out any of the screams of all the people you've disturbed yeah 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 and all the polar bears you just murdered yeah just fucking that you just covered in soot yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) there was just a little family of polar bears in your driveway they were just sort of yeah. just sitting there like you know that they, they had to move here because all the ice caps have melted and yeah there's no jobs in antarctica anymore they just got out of the they offshore to, detention facility yeah they had to know them here yeah in dalkeith yeah Dalkeith. down by the river down by the river i just pulled dalkeith out of my house i don't i don't know the setup of dalkeith it's a bit nice. Dal Keith. Dal Keith's a Keith. bit nice. It's just Dal not. Keith. Dale. Keith. It's not far Dale from uh, Keith. Claremont. Yeah. It's close to Claremont, which is very nice. So it must be sort of somewhat nice. Hi, my name's Dal Keith. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Balga. It doesn't quite work as well. Yeah. Sort of like. Hey, my name's. Dog Swamp. Ooh. Dog Swamp. Yeah. How's it going? Could you imagine? Uh, I could. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Because that is my name. Swog Domp. Is that that pigeon talk? Yeah. 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 Pigeon talk. (laughs) Give us some more. (laughs) Just... (laughs) See what you can... See what you can spout out at me. Yeah. Say... Say... Um, I only speak English in pigeon. Is what is pigeon talk? <laughs> <laughs> so he just said yes when I asked you. Is oh, that pigeon yeah. talk? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like this. It's like oh, okay. No, no, no. it's like when you swap like the first you two letters, first letters around or some shit. It's like like pig Latin or whatever. Fuck. Oh, pig Latin. That was yeah. fun, wasn't it? When you thought you could talk about shit in front of your parents, and yeah, they didn't like know. a Latin pig. <laughs> <laughs> you you Latin pig. Oh man. That's my favorite insult from um narcos. Oh yeah. Yeah, you Latin pig puta. 
What's a puta? Is that like puta. a is that like bitch? A bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, puta. Oh, gonorrhea. They call people gonorrhea. Jesus. Gonorrhea. Puto gonorrhea. That's a pretty good one, though. That's a good thing to call someone that's quite sort of grounded. It's like, yeah, like if I called you that, that you would really know that that's bad. Yeah, you're not even like a necessary living thing. You're like a, you're just a fucking disease. Yeah, you're a disease. You're, dis- yeah, you're a disease. Scum. And they took the time to be specific about the type of disease that you yeah, are. Because they, want to, they want you to know exactly what, how you are shit. Mm. And it sounds beautiful. Rolls off the tongue. Go on, idea. Mm. Like if someone said to me, you're a shit person. A shit person. It's a bit too abstract for me. Yeah. It's like shit. Doesn't roll off the tongue. It doesn't like, yeah. It's you're shit at being a person. It's yeah. not immediately clear to me that shit could be bad because I think that there's lots of great things about shit. I don't think you should take that as an insult if someone calls you a shit human being or a shit person because, um, or as a shit because you're a shit person. Like, yeah. What, what exactly dictates doing the job of a person? Yeah, that's. See, I would, yeah, I'd be the, proud of going off the rails on uh on that one, you know. Yeah, the jury's acting sort of like, out with yeah, that, acting like, like a cocker or something. How to behave? <laughs> I mean, you can't like run down the street naked with a fucking with shit all over your legs and a fucking kitchen knife. That, that's a bit weird. Yeah, but um, you start acting like a dog. Someone's like, "You're a shit person." You're like, I know. I'm not yeah. trying to be one. Yeah. I'm trying to be a good dog. <laughs> I'm trying to be a good dog. You know? I'm a dog? Yeah. Where's I'm the schmackos? Dog. Yeah, you, where's the schmackos at? Oh, there's a huge difference between being a dog and being a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I yell that whenever I walk into a club. Where the schmackos at? Yeah. Where the schmackos at? Yeah. Yeah. And then just and then, <laughs> all the most <laughs> disgusting people in society that have all congregated in that yeah. nightclub just peel themselves off the walls yeah and hey yeah. where the schmackers at and everyone's just in unison starts going <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was thinking about um some of those religious types on tv that um you know make fucking heaps of money and shit but they have those they encourage and they usually are a part of it as well but they have like these kind of like mass circles where in the middle they're just like ah, oh, ha- you know they have like these kind of oh, yeah, lightning the snake, uh, they're just tons. going crazy they're like, oh, 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 like yeah. out of their mind doing something that's quite i thought about like what would it what would that feel like to get a bunch of friends together and do that like just like we just thought of like getting a group of friends in a circle and saying to one of them and just going like just just jump inside this circle you know there might be a few other people around and just just do like the most embarrassing dance sort of dance thing, yeah. and chant that you can think of and just really release yourself from all that like just those, all those like kind of uh barriers and concerns about being embarrassed yeah. and fears just let them all go and just 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 give yourself up get into a trance state i think that's a shamanic yeah. sort of ritualistic thing people do do yeah well, I mean, that's it happens at like nightclubs like all the time. Yeah. People just, you know, they might be singing Rihanna. But, but you still have yeah. some semblance of dancing instead of just like literally just like moving. Yeah. Chaotically and like letting the energy flow out, however. Well, so what I'm just wondering like what has to happen? What do you need to really let go of to. Um, there's a fine line, isn't there, though, between dancing and then just. And that, like, we we know what that is. Like, mm. we know what this kind of just loosely crazed kind of movement is. Mm. Like, it would be if you did it at a nightclub, people would know. But the just, what's the distinction? Like, what what do you have to let go of to do that? Like, what are we still holding on to when we dance in some kind of structured way? Good question. Um, and isn't that kind of like like why doesn't it contradict itself? Yeah. Like, we dance, but we still dance within an acceptable paradigm of what we think is okay. And we, yeah. we're still, we still um, nodding our heads to the, our embarrassment and stuff like that. Because we don't want to be seen as weird and then ostracized, I guess. It's Even just, though, like, that doesn't really happen. Yeah. It's probably just in our heads that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. It's just so weird that we like think of dancing as this kind of release and this kind of like 
act of bravery, but it's a, it's still a very rigid, constrained mm. practice. Like it's, yeah, I want to, I want to get a group of people together and just really, I don't know, that'd be weird. I just would want to, I want to know how I'd feel about everyone afterwards, after we've done that. That'd be very hard to get some people doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would. There'd maybe be like one or two people who'd be like, yeah, maybe. But folks are rigid. Folks are rigid. Yeah, we are very rigid. I do that um, on my own. Yeah. Like I'll like just like do the silliest dance just to sort of like get get my mood up. Yeah. Do it in the mirror too just so it's extra silly because like you're looking at yourself, you're like. Yeah. It's like another person is looking at you. It's like, that's ridiculous. I'll sing like Gary Newman to myself and just be like. Who's Gary Newman again? He's the guy that does that song that's like. Cars, do, 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 oh, do, do, here in do, my do, car, do. I feel safer, so <laughs> <laughs> It's a good one. I that song, yeah. I, I wish people acted in society how they act, how they act with the kind of freedom that they had when they're in the shower. Like, that's, 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 that's the kind of person I want to jack it off. get to know. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like, oh, fuck. that's the kind of person people should be. Yeah. Person, people. We need to be more person, people. Yeah, we need to be. Sh- we need to be shitter people. <laughs> I always find the phrase like he's a he or she's a people person. That's a real. That's a real kind of weird one to me. Like that. That. Per- that's that person's a people person. Mm. Huh. As opposed to other people that interact with people, this one's a real people person. Yeah, like this one is peopling. Really well mm. as a person, as a person, and that's that's worth mentioning. But are people put up pe- people persons, good people persons with their own person? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Are they neglecting their own person for other people? Yeah, I read that. I read it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, you know, when you when someone is heralded as a people person it's always uh usually indirectly like it's no one's ever told directly like oh yeah you're a people person like it's (laughs) always like two people talking the other the people the the person in question the people person person um is nearby and the two people are talking describing that person as a people person but to be honest i think that talking to another person about who's a people person is what a people person would do I think we're they all should, kind of people yeah, person they really. should just say something different entirely instead of saying that yeah they should it, just change the conversation and say something different yeah <laughs> it's not very people person like to talk to other people about someone being a people person it's just not yeah yeah it's not personal enough are you a people person? Um, I think I can be. I we, can be a yeah. people person. We've said it so many times I've lost any semblance of what it means. It's meaningless now. People, people person. Peoples? People person. People person. People person. People person. People person. People person. <laughs> what if this is the outro of the podcast? People person. 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 That's freeing. I wish to replace all people persons with demon persons. What do you think of that? That's cool. Is it? That's cool because um, you can you can call someone a people person and that doesn't really change what they are. But if you call someone a demon person, they're like they're now a demon. Mm. They're a de- they're a hybrid demon person. One of us. One of us. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, it's just um. 
what do you think about going to parties these days? Like, what's your what's your general what's your feeling about um, about partying? Well, I'm a real people person, so um, <laughs> so that's where you'll see a lot of people is at a party. That's a that's a that's definitely a people orientated thing to, to go and do. Mm, if you're a people person, you would seek out people orientated places. I see a lot of people at parties where there's a lot of people, uh, and they're not really um, people persons. Yeah. And that's fun. That's interesting. That's fun and interesting at the same time. Um, you know, because I think they're kind of like trying to be people persons. You know, that's that's really where people persons are made is is like at a party. That's where you make yourself into a into a real people, people person. person. <laughs> I like parties because more people there to corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. I always like parties. Um, Mor- uh, morally and spiritually, you know. Mm. Just a lot of mass congregation, very easy to manipulate. Um, yeah. I like to. I like the ver- – this is probably the most autistic thing that I'm, I'm going to say for at least the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. But um, Don't sell yourself short. Yeah, it could be, could be could, much sooner yeah. than that. <laughs> uh I always like going to parties because there's so much variation in what can happen. You know, it's one of those places where mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. if you think about uh, in your life, like it's one, it's definitely the kind of environment you can go to where like really like anything could quite possibly happen here. Yeah. You know, you, n- you don't get a sense about that when you're at the movies as much or if you're at work or having breakfast but when you're at a party you're you're very aware you're like oh like there's a lot of there's a lot of unknown variables at mm-hmm. play here and i can't really make i can't really figure it all out this is good let's just sort of see how this pans out you know yeah it's a place to directly experience like mm. the manifestation of like 30 like 40 different personalities like just being oh. thrown out there and like chaos. see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's total chaos. Yeah. As well as, you know, um, social performance enhancers. Yeah. Like all sorts of different kinds. Well, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. I love a good house party. I do actually. Yeah. I think it needs to have the right mix, mm. you know, right mix of people for it to be, and, you know, people talk about, like, the whole sausage party thing, mm. like how you need a better ratio. I agree with that in a sense, but I don't agree with, like, the, the reasoning behind yeah. it. I agree because, like, when you get too many dudes, there's, like, a, an excessively masculine energy and it kind of twists the night. Yeah, it does. And it, I eventually get a bit sad. I get a bit depressed because I'm like, oh, this is kind of like – I just think the same, you know. These are just like eventually. These are just like there's these some of these dudes are just me or whatever, and they're also too aggressive because they're drunk or whatever. Yeah, there needs to be a balance. I think of um, feminine energy. I definitely agree with that, and I think that uh, what can determine how effective that is, like how having the the, the feminine energy there, is um, to be honest, like if you have the wrong kind of dudes there as well, mm. then the feminine, like having a, having females there can, can make them become ultra masculine and like mm. more obnoxious than they might otherwise be. And they become, yeah, it's a weird thing. they become like a handful. So I think you've got to have like a minimal number of those kind of dudes, like maybe one or two and then a sprinkling of just regular guys. I'd say zero. Zero is probably I say ideal. Really cull your social circle. It's hard to yeah. avoid though, because those guys are always they're always there. <laughs> always there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> yeah. They just sort Look of the surface. They'll just come out in the middle of the party with your fucking milk. It's drinking your milk. it from the carton. Yeah. And that that you know that. They're the kind of guys that just do stuff. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't know it was yours. With well, your it's, shit. It's my house, so yeah. of course it's, it's my milk. It's, it's my milk. I was actually going to. Yeah. No one brought it here and then left the party and you're like, oh, I'll just finish off this milk then. Yeah. No wouldn't want it to that. spoil. Yeah, wouldn't want the milk to spoil. I didn't want your milk to spoil, dude. It's going to expire tomorrow. 
What if I had cereal in the morning? Yeah. Has that happened to you before? So I was drinking milk? Yeah, I think it probably has. Oh, okay. I absolutely think it That's has. Disgraceful. But it's all about that mix. What's the what's the worst like etiquette thing someone's done at a party that you've had? Because you've probably had a few. Worst. Worst like etiquette sort of like like something like that where you're like, oh, what the, why the fuck do you do that? Like just a dick move sort of thing or like um, totally oblivious. Someone pulled like we have like um, it's like drywall in the toilet upstairs, and so the um, toilet roll holder was like it basically just has this like um. It's like spike on the back of it. It's like, um, yeah, st- <laughs> spike. <laughs> it looks like almost like a wine cork, but not as like convoluted. It's more rigid and right. it just sticks into the wall and holds the holder there and everything's great. Right. Someone just fucking fucked it up. You ripped it out of the wall? They pulled it out of the wall and just too- I think they tried to put it back in because there's just like a series of holes and the holes are all too close together so they punched these holes in and then it's just kind of broken it down and there's just a big hole now and it's been like that ever since Jesus yeah they someone just like, did that it didn't just happen I don't think it just happened they were just too desperate to wipe their ass they were just having a vicious yeah a just real a vicious shit real squirter sort of thing sort of thing yeah and someone's and, banging um, on the door yeah, so they're yeah they're obviously under time pressure as well. Yeah. They're feeling that urgency. You should get rid of the clock that's in there, like the timer. Yeah, that starts every time you open the door and close it. Yeah, you should probably because people probably think something's going to happen. Having a having a really solid under like sense of time when you're taking a shit is counterproductive. There's a you have to you have to disengage with time to make the most of um, you know that whole experience. Taking shit. Yeah. I think definitely. Well, I agree. Yeah. I remember that's what, um, before he passed, that's what Stephen Hawking would say. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Yeah. He would have said that, yeah, because that would have been a real ordeal for him too, so it would have been even more time consuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Damn. Stephen Hawking shitting into a, into a pan. <laughs> To a bedpan. That's that's just the harsh reality of life. Yeah. You know, we can't all... Just someone unlocking the secrets of the cosmos, just... Shitting into a bedpan. Yeah. In a diaper. That's a really liberating thought, is if you have any issues with somebody, or you dislike someone, or you want to kind of like not make someone seem more normal... If they if they're just I don't know like super celebrities only just think about like they have to shit like they like that's a really cool thing to think about that like <laughs> no, no matter what level of celebrity or fame or you know, fortune or whatever you accrue um no one can escape the requirement to constantly have to shit that's really cool you know I also like to think of like for now at least, you know, all the some of these incredibly ultra rich people still they're gonna die as well. That's kind of nice to think about. That that that's a really horrible thing to say though, that like it's nice to know that someone's like they might be really rich and they've afforded themselves some luxuries in life, but they're still gonna die. Well that's nice of you to think that for them, because they clearly don't think about that. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. That's why they accumulate wealth. They just want it all. It's coming with them. They're taking it. They're taking it to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. The day someone figures out how to do that, they're fucked. Oh, yeah. Do we <laughs> we're just <laughs> stared at this bug. <sighs> What's the time? Is that a cue to wrap might. it up? Yeah, that's probably, that's the bugs just come in to be like. Yeah. It's like when the fat lady sings, but it's when the little bug descends. You got to think though, like that bug, we all know what that sound, like it's right in front of me. Um, <laughs> we know the sound of that thing at night, like to <laughs> some other bug, that would be the loudest fucking thing in the world. Like to us, it's just like, eh, but if you were like some kind of micro, like some microscopic organism. Do they have ears? That'd be like an earthquake around your whole body. 
other vibration, right? Yeah, you're probably right. Like a plane. Like a plane for us. It's pretty crazy how far you can throw a bug and it still survives. That never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. Wish yeah, should the- we, uh, should we wrap it up? Yeah, I'll leave it on this. <laughs> I wish I had the powers of a bug. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs>